Hey guys, this is T from Driftwood Gaming, and we're back with another RPG Maker MV The Basics. This time we're going to go over the tile set tabs A, B, C, and R. Let's check them out. So as you can see, when you go onto map mode, you get a bunch of options for tiles and cool visual stuff that you get to use on your maps. Then we have an A tab, a B tab, and a C tab, and then the R tab. We're going to go through these and learn how to use them by building some maps. So let's start a new map. First we'll do an overworld map. So we'll call this the overworld map. And we already have the overworld tile set. We're just going to use the basic size. Okay, so for this tutorial we're just going to use automatic layering. When you do your own maps, of course, you can choose to use the manual layers or the automatic layering. So the first thing I'm going to do is put down some grass and I'm going to use the flood tool here and just put grass on the entire background of the map. Now this is the A tile and the A tile has some cool stuff called auto tiles. So we're going to check out some of these tiles and they have some features that are really neat. Uh, they are called auto tiles and what that means is as you place them on the map they're going to use different characteristics to spread out and join with tiles next to them according to an algorithm in the code. I'm not going to explain the algorithm in the code today. We may go over in detail more how these auto tiles work in, in a way that you'll be able to build your own but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to see how they work. So let's get a body of water here because you know you have to have a body of water on your world map. It's like, it's a requirement. You have to. So the next thing we're going to do, and, and if you notice that when, when, I drag, when I drag my mouse around the screen and I hold this map tile down, it continues to draw tiles next to each other and they change based on what other tiles they're next to. So we're going to put some rocks in here. Now look, if I put one rock, you'll see it's just one little rock, but say I want more than one little rock, I would just put another rock right next to the one I placed. It changes based on the tile that it's next to. So let's keep doing that and you can see how that looks. Now we've got a bunch of rocks. Cool. Let's add a whirlwind. Alright, uh, so the next thing I want to show you is how mountains work. These are also auto tiles and as you drag your mouse across the map, as long as you're holding it down, it will create uh, a mountain range for you. So we got a little mountain range here. Let's do like, yeah, there we go. And then we can make like a hilly section here. And these trees are also auto tiles. So we can make a little bit of a forest. And what else? We got some rocks. Let's get some rocky stuff. Yeah. And then uh, what map is complete without your desert? You have to have a desert. So we're going to put a desert in here. I think maybe this tile. Let's put a desert down here. And we want like a little... How about an oasis? We'll, we'll add an oasis in there later. Put some trees. Yeah. These are also auto tiles, see? And uh, I think maybe that's it for this one. So this is tab A. I think you have an idea now of how this tab works. Let's move on to tab B. So this one also has some interesting tiles in it, but these aren't auto tiles. You're going to paint with these tiles instead, essentially. You're placing them down. They're going to look on the map the way they look here on the tab. So let's put a little oasis here next to the desert. You'll notice if I put a bunch of them, they all look the same. We don't want to do that. Um, let's get a big tree. We need like a big tree. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to need a bridge for our river. Let's put this bridge. That looks cool. And how about, how about a little pantheon over here on our island? That looks good. And of course you need like your home base, your castle or something, so we're going to do that. No, actually, I'm not going to put that there. You could use an event to make this tree a place to go on the map. So instead, we're going to put the castle right there. Yep. And how about a little pyramid in the desert? And what else can we get? We want, like, a big mountain. So I want to show you guys these tiles. This is kind of like an auto tile, but you will have to fill in a couple things on the edges to complete it. So let's put a little mountain range down here. You'll see that it doesn't complete the ends. 
So in order to do that, we just need to grab the pieces and add it on. The cool thing is, it'll fix it for you. You see that? Very neat, very neat. Let's finish these mountains. Beautiful. Oh no. Okay, so we have ourselves a little mountain range down here. Uh, it kind of makes it so your character can't walk through here, so let's fix that. I'm gonna go back here and get the grass tile and get rid of these here. Little mountains. There we go. Let's add a floating island. How about right there? No, that doesn't look good. Where are we gonna add the floating island? Yeah, that looks good. Let's put something on it. Beautiful, gorgeous. Okay, I think we have a couple locations to make a little game on our map, a couple little fleshed out areas where we can do some quests. This is tab B, and as you can see, you have kind of a mix. You have some that you're just gonna place down and they're gonna look exactly the way they look on your tile set. And then some that act kind of like an auto tile, but not really. They make it so that you can layer your mountains and fill it in and it looks really nice. They're really cool. Let's put, it, let's put a little, yeah, there we go. So we have another destination over here. All right, let's take a look at tab C. Tab C has, again, more of the type of tile that acts sort of like an auto tile like this one, or it just is painted on the screen the way you see it on the tile tab. We're not gonna use any of these for our map because they're kind of, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a place to put that. That looks cool. Yeah, actually, we're gonna put it up here. Uh, put right there, and then we're gonna put this one there. Nice, awesome. So let's see, are we all done here? I don't know if we have to, no, let's see. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more cloud here to cover up this, this island, actually. Use this one, beautiful. Okay, let's move on. So this is an overview of the A, B, and C tabs for the overworld maps. Let's move on to doing an outside map. I'm gonna call this outside mapperoo and change the tile set here to outside. So I'm gonna start with the same thing, just the flood tool and some grass. It's a good place to start. And again, we're gonna play around with some of the stuff up here, some of this auto tiling stuff. Let's take like a circle tool and make a pond over here. It's gonna be a circle pond, sort of. I guess you can call that a circle, sure. And we wanna add some, maybe maybe we'll add a waterfall to this one. So this is interesting. We have cliffs down here, and you'll notice that they, they don't really look like a cliff, right? If you were to just put this the way it looks, uh, it's not that great. But it's not, it's an auto tile. So you, you make the cliffs by drawing them where you would like them. Let's make a... Actually, we're going to put it a little further down. You'll notice that the uh, the characteristics of the cliff changes automatically. We'll do that. And that. Beautiful. Okay, now we have our cliffs and a waterfall. You'll notice that we have a little bit of uh, rogue shading here, so you can choose to do what you'd like here. You can either erase it by doing this or add it along the entire side by doing that. I'm going to add it because I want to give it a little bit of depth. Wrong tool. I'm gonna put some lily pads in the water and some grass. Okay. Another interesting thing here is we've got some tree line up here. So you can put like a, a big forest. Oh no. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now we're not gonna do too much with this map because we're only looking at what we can do with this tile set, but let's make a little house. So with these houses, 
you have wall tiles here, and these are also auto tiles. So as you put them next to each other, you'll notice that they change. In fact, there's probably a better example than that. Let's take this one. You'll notice that it looks a little funky here, but then if you finish the wall, it'll it'll change itself to, to match. So we're gonna make a house, but let's start with the C tab because I'd like to use these roofs down here. Okay, now that I have the roof done, I realize that I need my map to be a little bigger, so here's a nifty trick. You can just click your map, hit the space bar, or right click and hit edit, and change the height of your map if you need some more room. And that's what we're gonna do. And now, going back to the A tab, we'll add the walls to this roof. Beautiful, beautiful. You see, you got, got some weird shading going on here again, so you can fix that with the shading tool. And now that we have walls in our house, we need to add a door and some windows. How about a chimney? And do this chimney. No, don't don't keep the shade. If you keep the shader tool on, things don't work out that great. Put this chimney here, and put some windows on our house. Yeah, there we go. And a door. Now to add an actual door image to your house, you would just go to the event layer and you can right click, quick event creation, and add a door. Let's go back to the map layer. Let's add some trees to our map. And some plants. So as you can see, the A, B, and C tabs work generally the same on each type of map. So before we move on to the R tab though, I'm going to show one more thing. On the A and B tab, you'll notice that there are two tiles that have nothing in them. These tiles are also very important. If you would like to erase things on your maps, you're going to use these tiles. They're called the transparent tiles. It's important to use the tile in the right tab because the transparent tile on the A tab will erase the images and the collision from images taken from the A tab. And the transparent tile in the B tab will erase the images and collision from images taken from the B and C tab. But if you use the A tab transparent tile to erase images from the B or C tab, the collision won't be erased. So make sure that you're using the right transparent tile. Now let's move on to regions. We're just gonna do a quick, simple example of what you can do with regions. I think I mentioned before that these are primarily used with plugins, but you can also use them in the engine. And in fact, MZ made it super duper easy to do. You used to have to do this event where you'd track your player and, and try and figure out what region they were on, and, and you still have to make an event that tracks your player and figures out what region they're on. It's a lot easier in MZ than it was in MV. So let's check it out. Let's get to the event layer and start an event that we can use to track our player's region. We're just going to put this in the top left corner. And there's a really nifty tool here called Get Location Info. So we're going to pop this in here and we're going to add a variable. This variable just stores the location info of the player based on the options that you choose down below. So we'll say variable one is player location region because we're going to specify that we're looking for the region that the player is currently standing on. So we're going to change this from terrain tag to region and as you can see you have quite a few options here. You can go by terrain tag, event ID, tile ID in each layer, and region ID. We're going to choose region ID. And then instead of a de designation by map or designation by variable, we're going to choose designation by player. This is what makes it so much easier. You used to have to set a couple more variables to track the player location. Now it's just a simple option on a drop down menu. Yes! I love this because I used it a lot. 
As you can see, you can also set it to an event on the map, but we're going to set it to player. Now it has to be a parallel event because it's essentially listening for each step that the player is on to see what region ID the player is currently on. So let's set something up to test this. Parallel. Okay. In order to test this, we're going to put some regions down. So let's put uh, region 1 right here, and region 2 right here, region 3 here. We'll make a little path. 4, 5, and 6. This should be enough to show what this does. And actually, just to make it easy to know where we're going, let's put down a little path where we set our regions. So in order to continue doing this, we're going to add a little something to this event and this is called a conditional branch. I'm not going to go over it in depth this time because that is the subject of a future tutorial, but let's get this set up. Okay, now that we have our listener event or parallel event set, we're going to walk on these regions and see what happens. Okay, so I'm sure that helps you to understand that these regions are extremely important, extremely useful. You can do so many things with these, which is probably why you get 255 of them, because you may use them all, who knows? I've never used them all, but they're just so useful. They can be used for so many things. A lot of plugins use them. It's a really great tab. Again, I want to reiterate, I am going to go over the event that I put in this. We're going to go over conditional branches, but uh, more in depth in a future tutorial. This is just for map tabs today. Hopefully the information in this tutorial was helpful to you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and join our Discord. The link is in the description below. Also, subscribe to our channel. That's it for this tutorial. I'll see you next time. Bye!